Okay, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's so good to see live faces this morning and be outside in nature with everyone. Um, it's good not to be in my kitchen. I know y'all are probably tired of seeing my white background, and this is so much more lovely and wonderful to be together. Yes, I know. Praise God that we're together. Um, just want to welcome you this morning. Want to give huge thanks to Mary Weaver and her group for hosting a yard sale, which we've been having all weekend. And it will be here today until like four o'clock ish. Um, so if anybody out there in Zoom or Facebook land is interested in coming, we have a yard sale here today. Still plenty of furniture and clothes and housewares and all kinds of things. Um, so I want to thank them for, for doing this as a fundraiser for the village and for our friends experiencing homelessness. Um, just as a support, like this is community, right? A whole nother church is doing this for us because of the work that we do in the community. So that feels really supportive and I'm really thankful. Let us open this morning in prayer. Great God of miracles, God of all creation, of every living thing, we give you thanks this morning for a new setting. We give you thanks this morning for community and for being together. We give you thanks for our friends who could not be with us in person but are still out there in our community as I ask that you bless our time together today that you hear our love for you that you hear our love for our brothers and sisters and siblings in this world as we are walking through some uncertain times We ask that you hear each of our voices, each of our hearts, everything that is said and unsaid in our being that needs your touch. We ask that you tune in. We know that you are tuned into us. We pray that we will be tuned into you. Let the spirit move in this place. Let us give each other grace as we try something new. We ask all these things in your son's name, who walked this very earth, who shared the love that we are to share with each other. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm happy to be with you all this morning. We're gonna do some singing. There's not that many of us, and so we're going to just do a song that we all know. And it was told to me one time that if this is the only Christian song that you know, it's sufficient. It summarizes what we believe in as Christians, and you all will know it. It's called Jesus Loves Me. Okay? You remember that song? We're going to sing it. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Amen. Amen. Are there any other songs that y'all can sing that you want to sing? This little light of mine. This little light of mine. Yes. Our friend, our friend, what is your name? Ethel. Ethel, thank you for saying that. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a 
bushel? No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All around the world, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the world, I'm gonna let it It's so nice to be able to um, connect when we're talking about the prayers that we're holding in our hearts and in our lives right now. Um, to be able to talk about those to each other and know other folks are hearing them and praying with us, that's so important. So I'm gonna open it up right now um, to all of you so that we can share our, our prayer requests, our celebrations, our struggles, um, all the different things that we're going through right now. Yeah, Margaret. Uh, I found out uh, last week that uh, my husband Daniel is in the beginning of stage four lung cancer. So we need to just need to lift him up in prayer. Margaret has just shared that Daniel is has been diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. The beginning of lung cancer. So we need to um, say prayers for healing and just for peace for Daniel as he struggles with that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thanks, Margaret. Jackson's family, 1561. Yeah, um, this past week. So prayers for her son, Lester. Yeah. Um, Brenda Jackson, who we lost two weeks ago, um, would have been 61 this past week. So it was a hard week for her family, especially for her son, Lester. Um, so we just wanna be in prayer for Brenda Jackson's family um, because of her passing. And I know that they're missing her so much, but also because it was her birthday as well. So that that feel that's a lot of feels, as we say, that, that feels really heavy. So in prayer for um, Brenda Jackson's family, Lord, in your mercy. Here are prayers. Yes, Miss Linda. Yeah. Linda brings up the state of our country. There is a lot of turmoil right now. There is a lot of divisiveness right now. There is a lot of um, feelings around COVID, a lot of racism happening right now and being called to the called to the surface, right? We're going through a lot in our country. Um, and to be able to stay in conversation with one another during that time is really important because here we are. So for everyone in our country, um, that we can continue to have conversations and build relationships during hard times, for all of our leaders, um, that we can uh, focus on the good of our country uh, for all people and not just focus on a political agenda. Um, that feels like the right thing to do right now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. Margaret. Uh, for all the homeless, the sand yep. outside right now. Yep, it's starting to get cold, um, as we know, and we can feel it this morning in the crisp air. We have a lot of friends who are sleeping on the streets right now, who are sleeping under bridges, on benches, um, by the river, in tents, not in tents, and, um, just need to pay attention and watch um, and make sure that we try to help get people connected where we can, right? Um, so that they're not just on their own. So for all of our friends experiencing homelessness and those who don't have a safe place to sleep at night, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. I want to give a special celebration for my brother. <laughs> he today to this very day is his 40th birthday. So shout out to Abraham McIntyre on your 40th birthday. I love you. He is somewhere else, not here. <laughs> anybody else? Yes, and anybody else whose birthday is this week. Anybody else have a birthday this week? Let's let's sing happy birthday. Okay. 
We're going to sing happy birthday not only to Abraham McIntyre, but to everyone else who has a birthday um, either this past week or this coming week. Ready? Y'all are going to have to help me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God loves you. And we did so do we. Happy birthday to you. Yay! We have a prayer request from Neil, um, his friends Steve and Becky. Steve is on a respirator with COVID, and Becky is homesick too. Um, Neil has just shared on Facebook a prayer request for us, his friends Steve and Becky. Steve is on a respirator right now at the hospital and his wife Becky is at home not feeling well. So prayers for Steve and Becky. Lord in your mercy. Hear our hear prayers. prayers. Also want to give a prayer of thanksgiving that we have Brenda and Mary joining us this morning. Hooray. So glad that you all are here. Lord in your mercy. Hear our, hear our prayers. prayers. Um, we need to pray for Mary who lost her brother to COVID and his wife and two sons also have it. Okay. Mary Hancock has a brother who had, sorry, had a brother who was 91 who passed away this week of COVID. So y'all, these little things right here are real. We need to remember to wear them everywhere we go. Um, Mary sadly lost her brother. Um, and then her, also her other family members have COVID as well. So we wanna pray for their family, especially for Miss Mary as she grieves the loss of her brother, um, but also with their whole family, they also have COVID. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Do we have any, uh, we're, Brenda, it's so good to see you. And I know that you've maybe been having a little bit of health hiccups here and there. So just know that we've been keeping you in our prayers. We love you. We're thankful that you feel well enough to be with us this morning. Any other prayer requests that we have? Let us, yeah, go ahead. For Pat Saib, who is um, her daughter's mother-in-law, just had a, a procedure, and yeah, Pat's family. Okay, we want to pay, pray for Miss Pat's family, Pat Saib, um, who is a part of our community and has been for a very, very long time. Um, she's going through a lot right now. She's got family members who are sick. She's in the midst of moving. There's just a lot of moving pieces. Um, she's feeling a little overwhelmed. So for her family, for her, for her move, for all the things that are going on in Miss Pat's life, we just want her to feel supportive because she's always been so supportive of us. Um, I know that that God is traveling with her on this, but it'll make her, I know, feel stronger to know that we're all keeping her in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, You're right. hear our yeah. prayers. Please be in prayer with me. Oh, great healer. We have some pretty big wounds right now. The wound of COVID, the wound of racism, the wounds of this life that we're in right now that is a little different than what we've experienced in our most recent past. Sometimes taking one foot and stepping in front of the other is about what we can do. And we give you thanks for walking this journey with us. God, when we are alone, Remind us that you are there. When we feel lonely, God, remind us that we are connected in a greater community that holds us together in love. God, when we have needs, help us to quieten our pride and reach out to one another so that those needs can be met because we know that in a community we can meet those needs each one of us with our different gifts god thank you for showing us real love 
Thank you for showing us love that is not wrapped up in capitalism and money. Love that is not wrapped up in what we look like or what we're wearing. Love that is not wrapped up in how big our home is or what school we went to, but wrapped up in us, God. In each of us, just the way we are. And I give you thanks for loving us just the way we are. Please be God with each of these prayer requests that have gone spoken and the ones that we hold still in our hearts. Give us the peace of mind and the peace of soul to move forward in the midst of all that life offers. We give you thanks for your example of love in Jesus Christ. And we ask that you fill us with a spirit to emulate that love in this world. Amen. Robbie is going to come up and do a song, and so we're happy for that. And come on, Robbie. Woohoo! As he's getting ready, I'll give a short intermission advertisement. We have um, upper rooms today, so before you all leave, I want to make sure that we give you upper rooms. We have um, small print and large print, so whichever one you think. Um, and if you have friends, either from church or not from church, that you think would like those. Um, you know, they're dated, but they also work not on the dates. <laughs> and so we have four months of them that we can offer to you to share um, with you and your friends. Um, so make sure that you grab some of those before you leave. Just 
<laughs> well, it is good to be gathered. Even though we are small in number, we are big in heart and love for neighbor and for God. Amen. Oh, I'm thankful to be with y'all. Okay, we're going to start with a scripture reading from Matthew 22, verses 34 through 46. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. So they had asked him a question. Now he turned the tables and he asked them a question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord? Saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare ask him any more questions, which is pretty funny. <laughs> the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Future generations are going to look for the love in 2020. Now, y'all, we all grew up going to school somewhere for however many grades, and even as early as first grade, we were taught some kind of history, right? History will be written about this year. People are going to say, but where was the love? In the dark night of pandemic, oppression of black lives which continues on and on and on from so long ago economic downturn natural disasters and threatened democracy the sons and daughters of our era will ask where was the love where did the helpers show up where were the peacemakers where were the disruptors who stood with those whose suffering has gone on way too, way too long? They're going to be asking those questions, right? Just like in today's scripture, there were questions going back and forth. People are going to ask these questions. Future generations are going to search. We here today search also. Amen? Amen. We long for good news. We crave stories of light and hope. We need to know Emmanuel, God with us. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You know, maybe Advent, you know, we kind of try to contain Advent to a certain four weeks of the year, but what if Advent has started much earlier? And we all are saying we yearn for a Savior now. Working in communications brings me face to face with a lot of different societal issues. And so I'm going to share with you today some of the places where I've seen love this year. And I want these stories to be written into the history books. When Jesus says, love God with heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, we will look back future generations will look back and they will say look at all the people who wore a mask because we don't know if we're sick with COVID we don't know some people are not affected by it and carry it and transmit it to others and so something that isn't comfortable I mean none of us want to wear these things but it can save and protect someone else's life. And is that not loving neighbor as yourself? Amen. You know, these things will get us through something as simple as a mask. 
where we are grasping out there for all of the things and we know that we need a vaccination and we know that we need cures for this virus. Something as simple as an individual practice can contain this virus. We will also write into history books how people came and stood with those who are oppressed in society and stood alongside them at their own risk. We think about people like our friend Justin Jones who has been out there fighting on behalf of Black Lives Matter and other people who have stood up and said this is wrong. The way that people are oppressed is wrong in this country. People who looked upon the death of George Floyd and said no more, no more. Now if y'all have never kneeled on your knees for eight minutes, it is a hard, thing to, a hard thing to do. And I did it on concrete this year when Ingrid and I went out to the Capitol and, and stood up wanting to dismantle the systems of racism right here in Tennessee and within Nashville. I knelt for eight minutes. That's how long that officer knelt on this man's neck. This man who was already on the ground, who was already defenseless, this officer knelt for eight minutes. I encourage each of you watching this to try it at home. Kneel for eight minutes and be in prayer. For all of those who stood with those who are oppressed, those who are not oppressed, using their power, their white power, their socioeconomic, whatever power to be able to stand with others and say, no more. That is love. That is loving neighbor as ourselves. Amen. Amen. People in the history books will look back and they will see how we began to treat one another with love differently after this year, that those of us who have learned lessons from the past are now living new lives, waking up, as it were, waking up. Some young people say that you get woke, you know, well, it is an awakening because we can live with blinders on all our lives, not seeing the pain of other people. We can live with those blinders on, and then when God starts to reveal our blindness and give us sight, just like the song Amazing Grace, which we will sing before this service is over, I was blind, but now I see. We know our friend Brenda Jackson can see now where she did not see physically on this life. She can see now. But those of us who are left behind, we too who have physical sight, who actually may receive that is almost like a barrier. Sometimes we see things physically and that prevents our spiritual sight because we just see what's in front of us and not what is past that, beyond that, in the light of God's love and have developed that spiritual sight within. For all of us who are waking up this year, we must live new lives, amen? amen. We must live the life that goes down in the history books showing that those who recognize systems of oppression dismantled them. Amen? Amen? We must be those people who walk courageously out of God's love, which is not just a sentimental feeling. It is something that inspires and drives our lives. It is the love that we see in one another, the love that got Brenda Hicks up this morning and let her drive in from all the way from White Bluff. What kind of love is that? That is courageous love and picking up a friend on the way and being safe in that care of one another. That is courageous love. Love that cooks for people that you don't even know, Judy. That is love. 
Love wants to express itself as you all do in your daily walk. Love is not just a sentimental feeling. It's not something like, oh, I just love chocolate right? We all say that because I love chocolate, but I don't love chocolate the way I love y'all. Love is an act. It is not a feeling. It helps us push past our feelings because we, we don't feel sentimentally kind towards one another. We can still practice the love of God by being, walking humbly with God in justice and mercy, right? That's what love is. It pushes us past that fact of whichever political vote we will cast this year that we still yearn for the best in one another and that we don't down talk other people, but that we reach out to one another in love and yeah. mercy and kindness yeah. because as Mother Teresa said, we do it anyway. And I was going to use my phone to pull up this quote, and now my phone is on uh, Facebook Live, so I can't do it, but we'll post it where Mother Teresa had a poem on her wall that said, people will abuse you, and I'm paraphrasing this, but basically, if you, if you are kind to someone, they will mistreat you. Treat them kind anyway. Again, I'm paraphrasing. If you love someone, they may not love you back. Love them anyway. And I'm gonna drop down to that final line in the poem that because it was not about them anyway. It was never about them. Practicing love is something that grows us spiritually so that we become more and changes us from the inside out so that even as our bodies wrinkle and age and waste away, that inside that image is becoming more brilliant and more beautiful because we can love inside like God loves us. Now, I want to put one parameter on this. We must also love ourselves. We must also recognize that we are one in this body and that when we cannot do acts of love because someone else abuses us, that we trust that God has got it Amen. and that God is going to find another part of the body who will pick up where we leave off yes. so that we can love ourselves as God loves us. Yes. Amen. Amen. We lift all of this to God this morning, knowing that we can be the love today in words, in small acts of kindness, in reaching out to those we judge without knowing, getting to know one another. Every ounce of faith depends on love for God and love for neighbor. As scriptures remind us, for anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. Right. Now I'm gonna say that again. How can we love God whom we've not seen if we cannot love our neighbor who we do see? Amen. Amen. Be the love that future generations will see in the history books. In a dark night, the light can shine brilliantly. Amen. Amen. I want us to do Amazing Grace now, and so I'm going to ask Robbie to come up and play, and we will sing along. I'm happy to help lead, and you all can sing along as you know the song. And we're just going to do a couple of verses. It starts out, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. And then we'll go from that into the final verse. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun.
Okay, let's just let's try it and then you you pick it up. Okay. Amaze. Is that a good key? Is that a good key? Sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. When we Most loving God, send us forth from this place to love you with heart, soul, mind, and strength, with courage and with might, seeing others as you see us. Oh God, help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Help us to love ourselves, to recognize that when we do, that we are in fact loving you because you live within us. Yeah. Help us become stronger people. Help us take care of ourselves so that we can take care of one another. God, give us your power and might to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And at the end of the day, Lord, let this all glorify you. Amen. Amen. Go in peace now. Amen. Amen. Hey, Robbie, can you go take up the offering? Sure, I'll take up an offering. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure, I'll take up an offering.